This mutation is called Radiation Zone and is being played on Rifts to Core Hall. We have three mutineers active. We have Black Death, Going Nuclear, and Outbreak. Allies making sure whether uh, there is a little partner knows uh, what uh, he's trying, uh, what he knows what he's doing. So uh, yeah, there we go on that. Um, this mutation is basically a cakewalk for Zeratul. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. And there's also mention of Bronze League Heroes. Uh, I don't know whether he, uh, he is aware that his partner uh, does a very similar uh, series from uh, this. I'm going to turn off the chat right now because it is uh, completely irrelevant as to the discussion that is happening right now. So uh, anyway, Zeratul is using his, his uh, Zoraya Legion now to go ahead and take his fast expansion. Uh, one of the things to note about the, uh, the going nuclear mutators as of this match, uh, the going nuclear mutator will deal damage to structures near the expansion. So this, this entire like square, you would think the square would be safe, but uh, it's not really true. Uh, the, the nukes actually uh, are, you have to hug the base very very closely if you want to make sure you don't end up losing your structures to uh, do that. There's uh, now another nuke that gets caught out, but unfortunately these units are aggro to the uh, to the Amon's units. And I think this last the Royal Legion will end up going down. Yep, it does end up going down, but uh, that is pretty much it. So now the uh, expansion has been captured. Uh, for Zeratul, and uh, Stukov has not taken the expansion yet. No... No extra structure though as well on uh, on Stukov's side, but he has put down the bunker, and this bunker will provide uh, Stukov with a little bit more uh, assistance and uh, defensive capability uh, for the time being. But now we have a bunch of Vikings that have lands. So Vikings are actually probably one of the better uh, options for Stukov here. Uh, him getting some of these Vikings does make it a little bit easier for him to defend, and he doesn't have to end up defending some more uh, crazy units like Zealots or Zerglings, which is probably what ended up wiping out the bunker in the process. But uh, yeah, there we go. Next uh, next attack wave will be uh, a while from now, and Zerto is just going to focus on his economy to make sure that everything is up and running before he starts to push into the first set of Void Shards. Now, uh, it was already noted that the build that Zerto will be doing is a mass cannon build, so uh, the cannons that will be uh, put down will have to be probably placed around the back here, and uh, they will be. Uh, they'll, they might be even be some tesseract monoliths pushed in the front here just to help uh, defend. And Zerto will be the character that will be providing vision, uh, so that the cannons can then be shaded across. And uh, this just goes to show you how insanely powerful Zerto is. So uh, Stukov is already starting to take his expansion right now, and uh, he's going to start uh, working away on this. And yeah, for the most part, all seem okay. Zeratul is... Okay, gotta move back to his base to make sure he doesn't get wiped by uh, by these nukes. One of the annoying things about going nuclear is that it is a very spammy mutator, and uh, the second you take your eyes off the, uh, off the screen, there will be a nuke that will come up and nuke your base, or your character, or your army. So what, what Zeratul is doing over here now is just putting down a few cannons to help defend uh, against uh, one of the subsequent attack waves, which will be targeting this, uh, this expansion. Just having a few cannons over here just to provide a little bit of defensive uh, uh, backup. Over here, Sukov does have two of his bunkers that are ready, and uh, yeah, we do have a few infested that are spawning as well. So, one of the things about Outbreak is at the 20 minute mark, aberrations will start spawning. And ideally, you would very much like to finish the mission before that 20 minute mark hits, because then it becomes uh, much harder to defend. And uh, Stukov is going to be really struggling against this one because going nuclear, as you can see, isn't it spamming. It's, it's a very, very spamming mutator. There's another attack wave, but the Zoraya Legion gets dropped now to help uh, handle this attack wave and uh, start providing a little bit of pressure against this void sliver or this void shard. Now, unfortunately, going nuclear means that very likely this void, this Zoraya Legion, is going to end up being lost to a nuke here. And then, as you can see over here, that is exactly what I'm talking about. There's an Apocalypse that unborrows here for some reason, and uh, it does get hit by the nuke, but uh, so far so good. There's a little bit of damage being dealt onto that Void Shard. Zeratul still sitting in the base, not really in much of a hurry, just slowly macroing up, making sure he's picking up all his artifact fragments because he's not able to shoot his cannons until the first, until the second artifact fragment is collected. But uh, I think for the most part, all this is okay so far. The Apocalypse does end up going down to the Black Death the Mutator. And uh, Zeratul is going to go and pick up this next artifact fragment, which is over here, which is where the pirate ship also will uh, 
subsequently spawn. Zerto makes his way back towards the base, and uh, now pretty much all okay. There are a few infested units that are uh, attacking the void chart. And again, really not really much in a hurry. Just making sure you take the game slow and stay. There is a Tesseract Monolith that also gets put down behind these bunkers, just to stun any enemy units that might start attacking. And now these uh, cannons have been used to take up the void chart. Cannons get cancelled. Make sure that the timer starts resetting as quickly as possible. And now again, a few more units here for the outbreak. Uh, there are enough cannons here to take those units out without infecting the mineral line. And now, the next set of void shards are out, and this is where Zeratul is going to work his magic. A few more cannons coming down as well, just making sure there are enough here. So, uh, again, as you can probably tell, this was uh, this is a while before I started uh, broke gets and it ends up getting stuck over here. Um, this is uh, this video is relatively old with my gameplay, but nowadays what I normally do is I put down some shield guards as well. To uh, I normally put shield guards next to the cans now to just increase the tanking ability of the cans because the uh, the shield guards can uh, regenerate the cannon shields uh, while they are in their projected mode, so it just makes them a little bit tankier. So now there's an attack wave that is making its way towards Seratul's base, and uh, now there's another shaded bunch of cans as well over here a little bit more uh, damage output. So again, these scans will be able to hold without uh, too many problems. There's an infest structure that comes down to help keep these scans alive. So he doesn't really need that assistance right now. And now this need goes down, but ends up missing pretty much everything that it was targeting. And now Zeratul is getting ready to pick up the third and last artifact fragment. That is going to be a maximum wrap-up time for Zeratul. It'll give him everything that he needs. And uh, he is pretty much then good to go. And Zeratul knows where he wants to go. He's gonna blink in. Uh, there we go, he wants to just try and get that artifact fragment. Unfortunately, not enough time uh, because he does get focus fired down by a lot of the Terran forces that are here. No big deal though, he will try and uh, pick that up at some point once he has respawned. But uh, overall, uh, this void, uh, these void shards are going to activate in 6 minutes and 45 seconds. So uh, it'll be in their greatest interest to start pushing right now because it does take a while for these scans to work away on these void shards. Structure-wise, Zeratul does have 20 cannons and uh, 3 Tesseract Monoliths, so Zeratul is flowing a few more resources, but now there are more cannons in production. So 8 more cannons get put down, and again, this is where the ramp-up happens for Zeratul, just making sure there are enough cannons over here. Stukov is uh, slowly starting to work through and eat up the enemy defenses that are here. So, you know, you do have a few losses for uh, for Amon Spoiling Venture that's going to end up weakening this side. We do have Zerai Legion that just dropped here as well, just to provide a little bit more pushing power. Again, there's a nuke that gets focused down onto this, and this will probably be the end of that Zerai Legion over here, which is why the Zerai Legion is very difficult to use on this mutation. But uh, we have the Apocalypse and the Alexander that has come down. Alexander does end up mind controlling a lot of the units of that attack wave because this is a pure air Terran attack wave. And now the cans have started to be spawned and shaded through. Now these cans are just going to completely obliterate pretty much everything that is there. So that is the first void chart down, second void chart is down, and now all that is left is the pirate ship. So these, uh, these shades are going to be cancelled at some point. But uh, yeah, pretty much uh, all the taken care of. And now, Zertul basically just has to wait until he is able to use Void Seeker again, and uh, he will be good to go. Uh, that pirate ship is going to be a little bit of a problem. I don't know if the commanders want to deal with it. I tend to not deal with it. I'm not sure uh, on this game whether I actually took out that bonus objective. But right now, just a bunch of cannons being used. And uh, see how these cannons are actually being placed, uh, you know, right next to the space here. It's because the going nuclear mutator will end up dealing damage to the cannons if you are not careful. So, uh, you know, there is a limitation as to how far you can push out. I think this base has a little bit more of a border, uh, but uh, this base is probably one of the worst ones here for static defenses. So, uh, uh, space is at a premium right now, and uh, there we go. So, Zeratul does get dropped here. The Avatar of Essence gets spawned, and the Zoraya Legion. And uh, the Avatar of Essence instantly devolves pretty much everything here, and now these cannons again are just going to end up cleaning up shop. Uh, there's a focus down with the Zoraya Legion onto that Void Short, and uh, that first Void Short does end up going down. Uh, again, these cannons are going to be held a little bit, and there are a few nukes as well here. You can see how just quickly uh, Zeratul is able to end up delete, just completely deletes that side without uh, any kind of resistance here. 
A few more cannons on this side, they need to be cancelled, the shape projections will have to be cancelled, but they might actually get cancelled through the nuke over here, so there are a few cancels there. And now this next to avoid shard will also end up getting cleaned up. The rest of these cannons, there we go. So the shape projections do get cancelled now, and uh, that will reset the timer on them. And uh, yeah, there we go, there will be another set of cannons that will be dropped. Uh, onto this void short here. There are a few infest structures comes down, but again, the uh, the broodlings don't really deal too much damage to the uh, to these void shorts, so uh, it's all up to Zeratul's cannons to go ahead and deal with it. In the meanwhile, there is an attack wave that is dealing a lot of damage to Tukov's bunkers over there, and uh, because some of the Banshees are cloaked, it is very, very difficult to uh, go ahead and deal with it. But the cannon, cannon shade from Zeratul provides the much needed detection for the Apocalypse, and uh, the attack wave is essentially clear that the Apocalypse does get attacked. Is there an attack command onto the Apocalypse? Number C. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Apocalypse, not too great feeling for dealing with this. Void Shard ends up going down, Shade Projections get cancelled, and Zeratul is good to go. So yeah, Sukov has uh, actually manually targeted the, uh, the Infestant. There's a little bit of a micro as well back uh, to make sure that these Infestants do not end up getting killed off by the Pirate Ship's uh, ability. A total of, we'll see, a total of 575 infested units have been spawned so far, so they do get end, up, end up getting stunned by, uh, by the Spire Chip, but the Spire Chip will end up getting cleaned up. And uh, you can see now infested marines are starting to spawn from uh, the infested structures. There is only 4 minutes left before the uh, infested structures will start spawning aberrations, so... Uh, it is in the commander's best interest to start pushing as quickly as possible, and right now there's plenty of time as well. So Zeratul is just slowly maxing out now in terms of structures. Zeratul has a total of 45 cannons and he's pretty much good to go. Just waiting for uh, everything to be set. I don't know whether his ally is going to be able to clear out this uh, pirate ship before... Uh, before it gets uh, before the situation gets a little bit hairy, so uh, we'll see what the plan is here. Their tool is still parked on the side. He's parked on the edge here, which uh, tends to keep the nukes away. He's, it's very unlikely that Zerto is going to get nuked, uh, given the fact that there are like a lot of infested units that are also on the map. So there's uh, one advantage of having a Stukov ally. It does end up distracting this nuke here. So more bunkers coming down for Stukov as well, and more cannons coming down for Zerto. And again, there will be one big push here. There's a Zorai Legion that gets dropped here, and a lot of Yamato cannons do end up going down. Uh, and now the Alexander comes up to end up cleaning up whatever's left of the rest of this attack wave, which uh, includes a bunch of battle cruisers. Battle cruisers will get mind controlled, ends up deleting the uh, banshees. Now the, ban the, the, the battle cruisers are left over here, but and, uh, do end up getting pulled by the Alexander over here, like so. And all these battle cruisers will end up dying a slow, painful death. So, Zeratul decides to help his ally out, just add a few cannons to the mix here to provide just a little bit of extra DPS. And uh, there is now a uh, bombing run that happens from the uh, pirate ship here. Two more cannons, again, just to, just to take out this pirate ship before it deals too much damage to Gov's army. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, so it comes in range of the rest of the cannons, and we'll end up getting picked off. And now the shade projections do end up disappearing. Zeratul does not need them anymore. And now, Zeratul is ready to embark on his final quest of taking out the last set of four Void Shards. So uh, Zeratul is just finishing up, I think, with some more cannons, I believe. I don't know where the rest of the cannons are being made. Yeah, they're being made it actually on the back line there, the mineral line. So uh, that will provide, again, Zeratul with a little bit more pushing power. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Stukov is going to start pushing to this side. See, see how he's actually managed to clear out a little bit of this enemy entrenchment here? Because, you know, having just a large number of units does make a uh, huge difference here. So Zeratul now has a spawn and he drops the avatar. And the avatar is in position. Does get body blocked by the rest of the skirt. Does end up uh, managing to soak, and soak up this damage though from the nuke here. And will get folks fired down by the rest of uh, the units here. So somewhat un in the inefficient use of this. But uh, again, Zeratul is in position now to get the nuke by the nuke over there. Some of the cannons do, some of the shade projections do end up disappearing. That Zoraya Legion is safe now. It does end up cleaning up that first void short. And now a few more cannons are getting dropped on this side. A lot more cannons dropped on this side now. And uh, they will start attacking these void shards and uh, folks firing down these void shards to make sure this mission ends in a prompt and timely manner before the aberrations start to spawn from the enemy bases. So the aberrations have started to spawn though. This is 20 minute 
and 45 second mark so you might see some aberrations along the way so very important to start clearing out the void shards now because eventually your defenses will get overwhelmed by that there we go so those are the aberrations i was talking about uh, those spawn all from enemy structures you can all clear this mission but uh, i think it's a little bit it's just a little bit inefficient to try all clear all of this and now uh, Zertul is waiting for his shade projection cooldowns to reset before he starts the uh, next set of runs. So there we go, another bunch of shade projections are coming out. And now this will end up clearing out pretty much all the enemy units that are left here. This void charge is going to end up going down. The last set of void charge will also end up going down. There are a few Thors here, so these will have a higher aggro priority than the void shards. But once the Thor falls, now this void shard pretty much has nothing left to uh, protect it and uh, now more cannon shade projections do come out as well and that will pretty much be the end of that mission because that is the last void shard down. Gorhal has been saved by Zeratul's cannons and Zeratul says look at me, I'm the cannon rusher now. And that is GG.